Hey everyone, Johnny here. In the last video, we created a procedural node tree that uh, can generate a shelving unit like the IKEA Calyx. I wanted to extend that node group a little more in this video by adding a couple of gizmos to it so that it can be controlled dynamically in the viewport. This will be a lot quicker process than actually making the node group, so let's jump right into it. This is where we left the last video. With the ability to create our shelving unit and adjust how many shelves high it is, how many shelves wide it is, and then a couple of options for different thicknesses for the different types of boards that are in it. I don't want to go overly crazy with the gizmos, I just want to add two. First I want to add one that I can pull to make the unit taller, and then another one on the side that I can make it wider. I don't just want to scale it, I want this to adjust the number of shelves there are as I pull it up, or the shelves are there are as I pull it sideways. So let's see how we would do that. I'm going to zoom in on the very end of my node tree here. Right here, this geometry has the entire shelving unit in it, and then that's assigned a material. What I also want to do now is add in two gizmos. To do that, I'll use the Add menu, Shift A, go to Input, Gizmo, and then choose the type of gizmo I want. For these ones, I'm going to use the linear gizmo, but the concept of using these is the same between all three. In working with gizmos, you'll see that they have one geometry output, and this output doesn't really carry any renderable geometry, but it does carry the geometry of the gizmos themselves. So we'll want to connect that in with my initial geometry here. So I'm going to duplicate this join geometry node with shift D and drop it here. And then I'll connect this transform into my join geometry. Before I go any further, gizmos will only show up on the screen if you have gizmos enabled for your entire project. And that is this button right up here. So currently I don't have gizmos enabled. But when I do, you'll see that I now have this gizmo show up. But this gizmo doesn't do anything, and when I grab it, it just jumps back to its original position. There are several things we can control with the gizmo. First is its color. We can use the primary color, secondary color, or the XYZ color. I'm going to choose the secondary color. The next drop down is what shape we want our gizmo to be. We've got arrow, cross, and box. I'm going to stick with arrow. The next three inputs are value, position, and direction. Value will connect to what we want this to change. So in this case, we want the value of our linear gizmo to affect the numbers of cubbies high this shelving unit has. Now cubbies high is an integer, and value here is a float value, uh, but those are compatible, so I can drag cubbies high and plug it into value. Next, we'll want to make sure that we enable this button here, which turns on the gizmo. Now, if I drag my gizmo upwards, as I move my gizmo, you'll see that it doesn't actually jump to the next level of cubbies until I've gone a whole blender unit. That's because this distance here is one blender unit from where it started. Well, a blender unit in my setup is equal to a meter. And each one of these cubbies is about a third of a meter. So what I need to do is multiply the distance that I've moved the gizmo by the size of the cubbies. That way, when I've moved the distance of one cubby, that should equate to one full blender unit that one blender unit will then add on one to my cubby's high value. One of the things that might not be directly apparent is that this double value line that's coming in here can have mathematical operations done to it. So whatever distance you move the gizmo is actually coming through on these lines. So what I'll do is I'll add a math node and I'm going to multiply this distance by my cubby size. Now when I move my arrow up, you'll see it more closely lines up with each cubby size as I pass it. 
If I wanted to get a little more precise, I could also add in the divider thickness. And that looks to be pretty close to what I'm going after. Now, of course, having the arrow always start down here at the base doesn't really accomplish what we're looking for. We'd like the arrow to be on top of our shelving unit so that we can just drag the top upwards and have it increase in numbers of cubbies. We do this by using the position input on the gizmo. The position is actually an offset from the origin of our object. So we'd like this arrow to be sitting at the complete height of our shelving unit. Now, if you watched the last video, you'll know that back a ways in my node tree, I'd actually calculated the full height of my shelving unit. I'll go grab that and show you what that looks like. So here's the outside height. I'll hook that into a combine XYZ and hook that just into the Z value. And then I'll connect that to the position. So now if I pull upwards on the arrow, it gives me what I want. Now let's say that you're working with a node tree where you don't have access to a special variable like this one that I already had. And you wanted to place this at the top of whatever object you're working with. Let's look at a different way we could approach getting that value. There's actually a couple of different ways. I'm going to cut this connection. And we'll look at the first way that I can think about doing this. And that would be using the attribute statistic node. If I add in an attribute, attribute statistic node, and I take a copy of our shelf geometry, I'm going to change the type to vector because we want to get the position of all of the vertices in this object. The attribute we want to sample is position. And we want the maximum position from all of the vertices in this object. But I'm going to go with a separate XYZ node here because I want my arrow to be at the XY center of the object. And I just want to get the Z height of the maximum point in this object. So that's one way you could approach getting this. Another way you could get at this is with the bounding box node. So if I add geometry, operations, bounding box, and hook that in, And then I can take the maximum extent of the bounding box. So those are several different ways I can get at this piece of information. Now that we've got this one added in, we'll do the same thing again, but we'll put an arrow on the side so that we can pull out more cubbies left and right. I'll duplicate my linear gizmo. I'll use the maximum bounding box again, but this time I want the maximum X value. Now you'll see that my arrow is still pointing upwards and I want it to point out to the right here. That's where the direction input comes in. This value is a vector pointing away from the base of our arrow. So right now, it doesn't move in the X or Y direction, but moves in the Z direction. I can change this by setting all three of these to zero and then increasing my X component. Just like our previous gizmo, I need to grab which value we're going to be adjusting with the gizmo, which in this case is the cubbies wide. And we'll want to do the same sort of multiplication we did with the up and down gizmo.
So now that we have this and we pull out, we'll see that our gizmo is adjusting our cubbies wide. But what you will notice is that the gizmo is not sticking to the side of the uh, shelving unit like the top is. The reason for that is as we pull out the, from the top of our shelving unit, we're adjusting from the base of the shelving unit and all of the increase is going upwards with the arrow. But when we increase from the side, you'll see that the increase is spreading across from the middle of the unit. So that just means that we're multiplying by twice as much as we need to be here. So instead of multiplying by the cubby height and the divider thickness, I'm gonna take that value and cut it in half. I'll just multiply it by 0.5. And now when I pull out from the base, you'll see that it works a lot more like you'd expect. So now I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. So now here we have our rendered shelf uh, in a little scene. And you'll see when I select it, I get my two gizmos so I can make the adjustments as I need. And there you have it. So that's the basics of adding gizmos to your geometry node trees. Uh, overall, it's pretty simple. Um, you just have to get an idea of the right way to hook them up. And once you do that, it's pretty easy to get going. So once again, thanks for watching. I hope this video inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.